Mahoney takes inside. The fastball for strike one from Josh McClanny. McClanny entered in the eighth inning for Brandon Nagum. Nagum now not the pitcher on the losing record after the tie game. And Edward pokes one into left field, a base hit. Well, that's a good way to start off. Blake Edwards off the end of the bat. Sneaks one past the shortstop. And now the winning run on base for Columbus State. Ryan Eiley coming to bat to try and advance him further. Eiley one for three on the day, a pair of strikeouts and then a single back in the fifth. Hamner has a talk with his relief pitcher, try and calm him down. Whereas West Florida needed four runs to get even in this top of the ninth inning, CSU needing just one. Anything in the gap may score Edwards, who's got a bit of speed over at first. Medium lead for Blake off of first base. Eiley showing bunt. He takes back to let it go by for ball one. Ryan up in a big spot. A 244 hitter on the season, the lowest of the regular Cougar starters. He's been pinch hit for a couple times in clutch situations, but that was always with the team down. Now a man who knows how to lay down a sack bunt is asked to do so right here. And he lays down a beauty, bobbled by the pitcher McClanny. He barely recovers in time to get Eiley out at first base. But Eiley will gladly take the out as it sends Edwards into scoring position with one out and the top of the order coming up for Columbus State. They'll get a couple cracks at bringing home Edwards from second. The first is Brendan Collins. Collins started the Cougar rally in the eighth inning with a double and scored on the squeeze bunt by Dustin Averett. And Mike Jeffcoat coming out to have a talk with McClanny on the mound. And the words he's saying are, are they goodbye? Saw someone come in from the bullpen. Yes, they are. So we will step aside. Another relief pitcher coming in for West Florida. One out, bottom of the ninth. Columbus State with a man on second, potentially one swing away from winning the game. You're watching CSU Baseball right here on Cougar Sports TV. And the man you see warming up for West Florida is Ronnie May, the new pitcher. Effectively the closer for West Florida. He's got three of the team's four saves. Called on in a big situation right here. May, a 4.50 ERA. This is his eighth appearance of the season. Four earned runs in eight innings. Just one walk, so some fair control, and six strikeouts. May out of Apopka, Florida. Graduate of Apopka High School over there. I think there was an Apopka, Florida team that went on to win the Little League World Series about 10 years ago. I seem to remember that from around the time that I was old enough to be in Little League. A proud baseball heritage from Apopka, Florida. Ronnie May looking to continue the heritage, but he'll have to come up huge right here. Blake Edwards led off the inning with a single off of Josh McClanny. Ryan Eiley bunted him over to second base, so now the winning run 180 feet away from the plate for the leadoff hitter Brendan Collins of Columbus State. Collins takes a break. He is one for four on the day. The double and the run back in the eighth that got things going. And May is ready. First pitch from the submarine style. Popped him up. 
Drifting foul. Hamner going back for it. And it clanks behind us in the bleachers. That catcher actually Tanner Bar actually Tanner Barnhart who came in to pinch hit back in the last half inning. Barnhart the catcher, not Hamner. Nothing and one the count to Collins. May another sidearm deal. Deals inside. Came close to hitting Collins, but he got out of the way. The count now one and one. Collins could have let it hit him, but it wouldn't have made any difference. The rule changed this year. In order for a hit by pitch to count as such, you have to at least make an effort to get out of the way. CSU and West Florida tied 5-5, five five, bottom of the ninth inning, the 1-1 one, one pitch. And a foul ball drifting out of play towards the left side, back towards the shared baseball and softball clubhouse for Columbus State. The count goes to 1-2. and two. CSU has been facing conventional pitching all night, and now they see the sidearm submarine dealio from Ronnie May. Medium lead for Edwards off of second base. Collins batting with a 1-2 count. Here comes the pitch, and a line drive into right field. That will fall for a base hit. Edwards being held at third base. The throw gets through two West Florida defenders. That's why you back up, kids. May is there to prevent it from going to the screen and allowing that run to score. But Columbus State now, the winning run 90 feet away. Brendan Collins with the single to advance Blake Edwards to third. And now Jackson Oliver, the All-American for Columbus State. Looking to come through in the clutch. And they won't let him. They will walk Jackson Oliver, the lefty, against the right-handed submariner May. That cannot end well for West Florida. So they will take their chances with Mike McClellan. Jackson Oliver will take an intentional walk. That will load the bases. And the only time, folks, you'll ever see them walk someone to get to Mike McClellan. You're about to see it now. Edwards on third. He's the only runner that matters. Collins on second and Oliver on first. And now Mike Jeffcoat's going to come out and have a talk with Ronnie May. A bit of strategy to try and retire Mike McClellan, try and induce a ground ball. They need to keep it on the ground. Anything in the air should score Edwards. In his four plate appearances so far today, Mike McClellan, a comebacker to the mound. He hit a fly ball out to medium deep center field. That would be deep enough in this scenario. And he grounded out to short and took an intentional walk and scored back in the eighth. Now it's Mike McClellan. Can the stirrups come through? Columbus State so close to victory. They had it in their grasp from the top of the ninth. Now they have it in their reach in the bottom of the ninth. Right now it rests on the shoulders of Mike McClellan. He came through with that walk-off homer in the NCAA tournament last season. Can he come through again against West Florida right now? First pitch for May and a foul ball just off of the handle of the bout, the hilt of the bat, I suppose you could call it. Nothing and one now the count to McClellan. Edwards inching off of third base. Little to no chance that May throws over to third base. No one ever throws over to third base nowadays, especially that, not in this scenario where a ball that gets away from him costs West Florida the game. McClellan, bat on his shoulders, takes a deep breath and stands in. May is ready. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. 
And a ground ball over to third base. It is foul. A foul ball. That one trickling just to the left of that third baseline at the last possible moment. Radovian tried to grab it as soon as he could, but it was just not in time. A lucky break for Mike McClellan. What could have been a double play or a fielder's choice at the plate turns into another chance. The count, 0-2. And I'm sure Greg Appleton will take a strikeout in this situation over a ground ball. Mike McClellan wants to put it in the air, put it in the outfield, and put the Cougars to the plate. McClellan steps back in. Ronnie May ahead of him, 0-2. And, and here's the pitch. And a fly ball, that one drifting foul and out of play. Stark watches it go into the grass between the field and the street. Another 0-2 count. This will be the fourth pitch of the at-bat to Mike McClellan. Mikey stands in, takes a couple half swings. May getting his sign from Barnhart. Ronnie's ready. The 0-2. Check swing. Doesn't go around. That off-speeder outside. Ball one. Mike McClellan. Got his eyes big that time, but able to hold up at just the last moment. The count goes to one and two. Edwards on third. He's the only one who matters. One out, last of the ninth. Here's the one-two pitch. And a chopper foul. McClellan off the end of his bat, staying alive that time. Sixth pitch of the at-bat coming. Ronnie May and Mike McClellan locked in combat with the game on the line as we reach 9 o'clock on a Tuesday night from Columbus, Georgia. May is ready. McClellan is not. He steps out. Now Mike steps back in. Does Columbus State have a win in them? The one-two pitch. And a liner into right field. This will end it. Caught by Kiefer. His momentum carries him out towards the line. The throw will not get there. And the Cougars win the ball game. Mike McClellan, the walk-off sacrifice fly out to right field. And for CSU, it took a little longer than they would have liked, but they come out on top against West Florida. Six to five, the final on a Tuesday night from Ragsdale Field. Well, Mike McClellan, part of his keys to success, staying hydrated. He must have had his Gatorade in droves before that last at bat. Sliced a liner into right field. Kiefer had to sprint over to get to it. His momentum did not allow him to set and get a good throw to the plate. And Blake Edwards, with his kind of speed, no chance to get him at all. And the Columbus State Cougars end their three-game losing streak. They get back on their winning ways with a 6-5 to five win over West Florida. CSU improving to 11-7 on the year. West Florida falling to 11-6. Player of the game? Oh, you got to give it to Mike McClellan, the man who won it for the Cougars. Aside from him, I would wager on Brendan Collins. Collins, who had that rally starting double back in the eighth inning that eventually led to three Cougar runs. They needed all three of them as West Florida came back for four in the top of the ninth. And then Collins earlier in this ninth inning had a one-out single to advance Edwards to third base, forcing the intentional walk to Jackson Oliver and bringing up Mike McClellan for his heroics. What a ball game. What a ball game from the rag. CSU will be back in action on this field tomorrow afternoon as they wrap up their two-game series with West Florida. The CSU softball team also in action tomorrow. 
You can follow along on those games on CSUCougars.com. We'll have the live stats from both of them. And until next time, on behalf of all of us here from Ragsdale Field, this is Will DeBoer saying so long from Columbus, Georgia. CSU comes out on top 6-5 to five over the Argonauts. You've been watching Columbus State Baseball right here on Cougar Sports TV.